Today we're going to look at hackle dry flies. It's one of my favorite subjects um, and one of my favorite ways to target trout in our, particularly our local streams in southern England here, uh, where we can see the fish and watch them come up to intercept a dry fly. Um, but also a great all-round fly for all over the, the world. Starting off with the very famous clink hammer, a fly originally designed by Hans van Klinken. Um, this will cover a huge array of scenarios just by adapting the, the colour of the, of the body uh, and also adjusting the hook shape slightly. You'll notice I've gone for uh, quite a simple hook here. It's a, a straight eye um, grub hook. Uh, this particular one is a Partridge K4A, um, K4AYSE, and that's their straight eye grub hook. Uh, and this is the perfect shape for a lot of um, the clink hammer style flies that I'm using. Threadwise, um, keeping it simple, this is one you'll see throughout a lot of the videos. It's the Semperfly Nano Silk in black, uh, 18 uh, The reason I like using this, particularly with hackled flies, is not only is it thin, so it allows you lots of thread turns, but it's also strong. So it allows you really good securing turns that you know are going to hold those hackles in place. So here we go, starting just back from the eye of the hook, we're going to begin laying our thread turns. You don't want to take it too far back, almost level with the point of the hook. And we're just going to trim that tag end out and work it back a little bit. We're just building our base for our parachute. Parachute flies are always a bit of a bit of a challenge at times. They're great to fish with. Um, really good for being able to see uh, on the water and also um, really effective. The fish don't mind that bigger parachute on top. So what we're going to do here I've taken some Semperfly poly yarn and I've taken half the thickness uh, that it comes in and I'm going to pass it through on my side of the bobbin and out onto your side of the vise and take my left hand in this case round and use the weight of the bobbin so you can pull that up use the weight of the bobbin to drop that down exactly where you want it take one turn round and again, just use that bobbin weight to position it on top, and then you can put your pressure turns on, securing that in place. Now we've got this little bow formed, and what we want to do is marry those up, and you'll see this nice black thread against the white post material here. Um, take it over, drop it on the other side, then take it back towards you so it's not going round and above the eye so you're now uh, effectively tying round the post material and not around the hook shank at all and with each turn it's a touching turn up and here what you're doing is you're creating your base for where your hackle will go later on a uh, few turns up and then you can start taking it back down, dampen it off and you'll see a lovely thread base there. Always make sure that you've got enough of a post that you can get hold of and grab nicely, uh, but not too much that it's going to get in the way with the rest of your tying. Now what we're going to do, take our thread all the way down to the back end of the fly um, so we can build our body material going forward. Nice and simple for this. Um, personally I don't worry about um, any ribs or anything like that. Uh, I don't think it makes too much of a difference on the fly. Um, for this one this particular one I'm just going to do a grey body um, but normally I'll tie these in a in a grey, a tan uh, and an olive um, just to cover different bases. Uh, where you have a lot of terrestrial flies it's good to have them in black also. So lengthening this off 
Uh, this is a super fine dubbing, uh, also by Semperfly. Uh, so the nice thing with this is it's really long fibers. So place it to the thread and begin wrapping the upper part of it. You don't need to worry too much about the lower bit being quite loose. We just want to slide that up with our forefinger there and get a couple of locking turns to the shank. Now you can start tightening the lower section and begin working your way forward. What you want to try and do is get a taper going in the dubbing so it's thicker towards the bobbin holder and thinner towards the shank of the hook. This will then, as you wind, show in giving you a taper through the body of the fly, um, which will give you that really natural look as you go forward. Got a fraction too much dubbing, so we can pinch some out and tighten that last bit off for the last couple of turns there. And make sure that poses. So we've got a nice tapered body in. Now we're going to change as we're in the thorax of the fly. And when we're representing emerging insects, the, the thorax of uh, most olives that are emerging it's quite dark, um, it's where the wing bud was. So here I've actually gone for, uh, I think it's called Rainbow Black, uh, Black Peacock even, uh, by Fasner. Uh, it's a squirrel based dubbing with a bit of flash in it. Um, it's got a nice amount of guard hairs, so you get some spiky, leggy type bits. And wind that all the way up to the post and take my thread in front there. Now I'm going to select my hackle. Uh, in this particular case, um, I've got a grizzle cape here. Uh, most of the flies you'll see this evening uh, will be tied with grizzle. Uh, it's just such a, a great go-to fly. Uh, it really is a represent all things to all trout type of, um, type of material. Um, a bit like hare's ear or pheasant tail, it's just one of those um, materials that you shouldn't really be without. So now we're going to just try and select the right hackle and one way we can do that is by taking one hackle and bending it round the post and then you'll see how it compares against the fly as a whole so here i've got one i'm bending just inside the middle and you'll see how the fibers come almost to the back of the fly that's a good length it's going to give me a nice spread of, of hackle um, and not look too unnatural, not be too heavy on the fly. And then all I'm doing, I want to get rid of these fluffy fibres. Uh, they're no good to me. And I tend to get rid of a good, almost the same again, of these lower fibres because they're around this thick part of the stem, um, which when you're winding, it doesn't take to the fly very well. Same with all of the flies we'll look at this evening. And what that can cause, it can sometimes cause the hackle to twist as we tie it and then often go the wrong way to, to how we would like it to sit. So pulling the fibers off, we want to do the same on both sides of the stem. And this prepares the fiber to tie in. And then I'm going to tie it in on my end, on my side here and I tie it with um, the darker side of the cape, so if it was draping, so it's draping down. So always the cape side down. Hold it and use that thread turn to really pinch it in close to that. Pull this back. Um, if you're ever unsure and you've got enough room, you can pull that section back and actually take your, if the thread allows you, take your thread over it. And by doubling that back, that hackle's not going anywhere. It's not going to slip. Trim that out. And dress that back. So some people will tie it up against, uh, against the parachute and wind down. 
Um, it's just each to their own. Uh, with the, this particular hackle, I know that I get good coverage. Um, so I quite have to, like to tie it in the way that I'm going to wrap it around the parachute. And here's the important reason for leaving the parachute longer than you're going to have at the end of the fly. Is when you're, I've got my hackle pliers on here. When I'm wrapping around, I want to take my other hand and actually hold on. So I know that's not going anywhere. So take your turn through. And I always try and take my turns lower. You can actually stroke up and turn through. And with a good coverage of hackles. Four or five turns are usually more than enough. So I make sure that's nice and tight. I'm just going to take one more forward, then use my left hand, my spare hand, to stroke the fibers up and out the way, and use the weight of the hackle plier to hold it down and take my thread between the two. So I'm not trapping any of those fibers that I've just tied in. And you can get Again, with that nano silk, you can get a good few locking turns in. And make sure you hold the hackle away from the thread. And just trim that out. And there you have everything tied in. You can stroke that back now. Wind back. And you want to go in with the same dubbing as just behind the post. And so we've got that black peacock with the slightly buggy leg approach. So hold everything out the way. And wind that through. Make sure it's dubbed on nice and tightly. So it's not going anywhere. And take that forward and you want to just tapering down to the eyes so it's getting narrower as it gets to the eye of the hook. Leave plenty of room at the eye. So we'll tidy that up in a second. But here we go, we're at the eye. Whip finish tool. Use the parachute to hold everything out the way as you wrap that round. We don't want to trap any fibers down. And again, just for luck, locked off there and take our thread out right now we can do our tidying up work so I hold the parachute up and just brush those fibers down tease them out so they're all going in the direction that they should be you'll inevitably have one or two that have been caught I always get these two here and if I don't like them just clip them out so they're not in the way not that the fish really mind but I just like to uh, and then trimming the parachute lots of different ways you can either give it a straight cut always cut it relatively long you can always trim it down when you're on the river or you can give it a slightly diagonal cut if you want a, a bit more of a wing shape which we'll do on here so you see you've got nice length and then if you push down on that with the finger it will splay out a little bit and that will give you a better chance of seeing it when it's on the water and there you have it that is Hans van Klinken's clink hammer one of the best emerger patterns you'll find for for all river uh, and lake situations really is a, a great fly for for trout grayling and numerous other river species that will take flies off the top